Hi, my name is Alex with Data Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today, folks, I have the complete honor and pleasure of getting to interview Chris Cook. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that Chris somehow makes it onto almost any and every video because any opportunity that I get to talk about Chris is always a good day in my book. Now, Chris was one of the very, very first supporters of this channel. So he has a very, very special place in my heart. He was there when nobody else was, and he continues to be there for the channel, for me, and for everything that we're doing in this Atlassian community. So I'm very honored, very humbled that I was able to spend a good amount of time with Chris, and I look forward to you learning about his story and hopefully finding out why I think Chris is such an important person in the Atlassian ecosystem. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome back to another interview. Today I have the pleasure of talking with Chris Cook. He's one of my favorite people on earth and one of the very first supporters of the channel. So Chris, you know you have a special place in my heart because you were there when nobody else was. <laughs> and oh so man, like, the, the respect is entirely mutual. Thank you so much. Well, thank you again for your continued support. You just have no idea how much of an impact you and your team have had on my life. So just appreciate you taking the time here to, to get to know you a little bit better. Excellent. Game recognizes game, as they say. <laughs> as they say. Well, you definitely, um, you, you take the game to a whole different level. So appreciate you <laughs> and everything else that you do. Appreciate All right. So, so why don't we jump into it, Chris? Thank you again. I know you're super, super busy. Um, not every day that I get to interview um, high profile members of the Atlassian community. So I want to be very, very mindful of your time. <laughs> it's not, not that valuable these days, but thank no, not, you, not, not anymore. <laughs> I would have thought um, uh, Andy is flirting with the idea of moving down to San Diego and just having perfect weather year long. So maybe maybe we can get the whole custom charts team to move over to San Diego. A Andy's one of those guys that everywhere I go with him, he's like, this is nice. I should move it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should like really San Diego, like, it's it's something else. Beautiful like, part of um, the world, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We we don't mess around with our with our weather here because we have like literally perfect weather the whole time. <laughs> I, I'm right, British, so... so if everything was too good, I don't think I could handle it. Yeah, you don't think so? Yeah, Nothing to just... complain about. So. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. No, we. I mean, just like this beautiful sun the whole time, and yeah, no humidity. It, it's awesome. It's great. I um, people are always uh, very tripped up because I tell them my air conditioner is me opening my window and closing the window. Like, Perfect. that is all I need to do. <laughs> and they just like, how? It just I'm like, I pay a lot to, to have this luxury. <laughs> all right. So why don't we kick things off with, uh, Chris, why don't you walk us through your origin story? Obviously, again, like I mentioned, you've been a huge supporter of the channel for over a year now. I remember last last 4th of July in the United States, um, we were setting up the AdSense. You were helping me, you and your team were helping me figure out how to, how to, you know, pay Google um, some more money. <laughs> yeah, pay pay Google some money to to help me promote some of my videos and and look at how far we've come. Um, six hundred thousand views later and over six hundred yeah, congrats, thousand. Congrats, congratulations, point. man! It's been meteoric. So yes. Anyway, enough about you. Let's talk about me. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the the main event. Why we're here. <laughs> let's talk about. I am. Um, walk us through your origin story. Non conventional story. Um, I was a scuba diving instructor as my first job. And so after I finished university, I mean, before even, started teaching scuba diving out in Thailand. Um, and then, yeah, then there was a big economic recession. And so having a dive school in Thailand seemed like a good plan. Um, and I got involved there through turtle conservation uh, and doing that sort of like eco-tourism. A lot of people want to make a difference, don't just want to uh, go on holiday and sunbathe. So I uh, started working, yeah, with... Uh, Turtle conservation in Thailand and setting up a small tour business there. Um, I learned a lot from it. I enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, well, like, it was time to move on. That's sort of a young man's job. And uh, software was eating the world. So I knew I wanted to come back to England. I knew I wanted to get in software. Uh, and I was just lucky enough to find a job at ClearVision, big solution partner, now acquired by Effie Code. Uh, and uh, I think my first job was sending spam emails. And because the Atlassian ecosystem is growing so quickly, um, they, they were just desperately hiring anyone. <laughs> and uh, I was lucky enough to find that. Uh, and yeah, I, it's been a meteoric rise ever since. Awesome. So 
I, I'm, I'm sure we're going to get into it a little bit more, but so you went to this partner, but then when I met you, a lot of the history that you told me is that you were with Adaptivist. Yeah. So yeah. How did so, that happen? so that was interesting. Uh, I, I left Clear Vision after a few years and a couple of job promotions. Um, ended up working for a small tech startup called What Three Words, which is a strange geolocation uh, startup using dictionary words. Um, and then, yeah, after six months there and moving to London, uh, that wasn't working out. So, you know, needed another job. Um, and yeah, found Adaptivist. Uh, and so I remember I called Jerry at Clearvision and told him, like, you know, don't want to burn any bridges here, mate. Sorry, but uh, been offered a job with Adaptivist. He gave me his blessing because he's <laughs> lovely. And uh, yeah, and then not only did I get to see a different partner and how they did things differently. Um, but also they had more apps, like stuff like Script Runner. Uh, and, and so I was able to learn a lot more about that business. Um, and at Clear Vision, I had a marketing role. At uh, Adaptivist, I had a sales role. Um, and so just not only seeing how those two different companies operated, but doing sales and marketing and all the contacts I'd met along the way, I started to realize I had all the pieces I needed to start my own marketplace vendor. So yeah, sort of reached out to some people and, uh, and connected as I tend to do, put people together. Um, and before I knew it, we had a dream team. And that's how we started making color picker for Jira pie charts, which <laughs> was meant to be a practice app. Believe it or not, we we're like, let's make this as a simple practice app. And then what we learned from that, we'll then go on and build a real app. But unfortunately, people started paying us for, <laughs> color <Fortunately. picker> for <laughs> Jira pie charts. And so we accidentally made a successful business out of it. Yeah, and that and that pie chart is pretty dominant in your um, brand and in your logo. So it's like it's the first thing that I look at and see every time I look at custom charts. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, Old Street Solutions, and where does the name come from? Is is it actually a street? It is. It is. It's uh, in Shoreditch. Uh, there's a roundabout called Silicon Roundabout because there's a lot of fintech companies there. Um, and I used to walk past it all the way on my way home from Adaptivist uh, to my friend's house in London. Um, and when we were debating naming the company, it, we'd been arguing over it for months. And Yasek yeah, just pointed at the sign and went, Old Street Solutions, we're done here. <laughs> we're done. I, I think his logic was uh, Americans like London. So, so just <laughs> try and sound British. But I've since found actually like, I think there's like 18 vendors in the Latin ecosystem that have named themselves after the street where their office was. Really? I like creative. That that sounds like a really cool segment that I'm gonna have to probably do and start finding companies that were named after streets. <laughs> it's surprisingly common, or the name of the office cat, or like the truth is, I just didn't care. I didn't think it was important, um, and, and yeah, like for for me, it's not something I love or feel particular attachment to. It was the name we went with at the time, and then you know, once you bought the domain and set up the website, it's kind it was, of it was we always figured we'd rebrand down the road, but it was just never important enough. So. Yeah, we're old. Nice. So then, how did you come up with the custom charts? Then, like, what, where did that name come? Was there more thought into that one? <laughs> uh, yes, but um, <laughs> so giving some marketing advice for free, as I like to do. Um, <laughs> it was just a case of what people were searching for on Google search volume uh, <laughs> and, and what people were voting for on the Atlassian community. So I so always say, you know, some industries are really hard. You're not sure what the customers want. You have to pay for market research. Atlassian's brilliant because there's loads of features with 10,000 votes on. People are like, why don't you do this, Jira? And you're like, cool, that's a business. <laughs> so <laughs> custom charts for Jira was just uh, an, an, an easy, high search volume, low competition keyword. <laughs> Look at I that, always man. advise people, just name your thing what it does. No one cares about your company. You know, I never tried to be famous as Old Street. I was like, we are custom charts for Jira. So it's, because most people would rather Jira did it out of the box, and that's what they're searching for. Right. So, yeah, it, it's very dry and it's very boring. but uh, Very effective. Yeah, it, it just had the highest search volume, like, to, to get in front of people. That is so such a genius idea, though. Like, I never would have thought, like, name your company after the search keyword searches that people are looking. So I saw recently there's a Thai restaurant that's named itself Thai Restaurants Near Me, and I'm just like... <laughs> that's what people search for in google maps right? so i i guess if i ever did open up a restaurant and be like pick whatever you want <laughs> yeah yeah like whatever people were searching for that's my yeah, whatever people were looking at yeah that is that i think i might have to start rebranding some stuff here because that is 
infinitely more smarter than anything else that I came up with. <laughs> <laughs> People always think marketing's that coming up with something cool and different, but everyone else is doing that. To come up with something really dry and boring. And yeah, and just watch it, it, watch it take off. Yeah, <laughs> cool. All right, well, again, yeah, learning it from here first, uh, how to market your company and coming up with names. So walking down the street, see what, if something hits you with inspiration and or look up what people are looking up. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what's your first at last year memory then? So is it within Clear Vision? Like walk us through like yeah. the first time oh. like you laid your eyes on Jura or some of the last year products. So what the imposter like? syndrome was terrifying. Like, I remember like having all these, uh, reading all these blogs about Jira and software development life cycle and looking at all the graphs and trying to desperately learn what Agile was. Um, and Confluence, you know, intuitively got, it's not hard. Uh, but Jira really struggling with, like, I, I got swim lanes and I got the board. But I never really got the hang of uh, Jira query language. Uh, <laughs> never really understood anything. Uh, so, yeah, just, just remember struggling, like, like not understanding as a non-technical user, right, as a sales and marketing person. Uh, just remember thinking... Jira was too much. And I think my, you know, but the funny thing was I I was already familiar with Trello and I'd been using that for my project management for my businesses. So, so Trello I knew, and but that used to be the secret thing I used on the site. And then the moment at last year announced the acquisition of Trello, I just got out all these boards like, <laughs> <laughs> cool, these are now on the menu. So excellent. Uh, so yeah, I really struggled. And the big one was uh, Adaptivist. They made us use Jira as a CRM. Uh, sales uh, system and uh, don't do it. Friends don't let friends use Jira as a CRM. It, it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so yeah, that was yeah. kind of the inspiration for, for me to make an add on. Is I was like, there, there must be more people like me who, you know, aren't super technical, aren't super nerdy, don't want to study a, a two week course and how to do something and just want it to work simply and easily off the bat. And so that, that was really the plan with custom charts. Even before we knew what we were doing, I knew like what, what's a niche that desperately needs to be made easier to use and more intuitive. Cause it's not just, I mean, what, what's a non-technical person, you know, even someone in marketing uses Google analytics or like, oh yeah, there's all sorts of technical in everyone's jobs. Right. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, you're getting to the point where you can't even use a toaster without knowing how software works. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, like I say, most people just don't have time for it. And and for me, I always saw the gap between uh, B2C apps, right, uh, direct to consumer. If you downloaded an app on your phone and it required a two-week training course to, to start using it, you would uninstall it from your phone. And yet right. for so many business applications, that <laughs> seems to be the default. And, and for me, it's just unacceptable UX and lazy design. So... Yeah, I, on, honestly, like I'm surrounded by Jira evangelists, people that love it. I'm not a fan. I think it's okay. I think it could be better. <laughs> and uh, I think, but that's the brilliant part of the, uh, you know, the app ecosystem is that there are people making Jira a little bit better. Uh, yeah, no, people like me. Yeah, one of my, I don't know that I've, I don't think I've definitely never have told you this story, right? But I, I try to use custom charts for Jira everywhere I go. Uh, I'm working with teams all around the world all day long type of situation. And my favorite thing is like, even though it's super, super powerful, now that I'm looking back at the last year of me using custom charts for Jira, not once have I, has ever anybody ever said, Hey, thanks for this recommendation, but how do you use it? <laughs> like everybody, I just yeah. go, if you want charts, go use custom charts for Jira. And nobody ever comes back to me because they can intuitively just get started with it and just do what they want to do. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, Elegant. We work hard so everyone else can work easier. A lot yeah. of thought and design and UX planning goes into that because you want to just be able to look at it intuitively and get it. And there's a balance there because, you know, there's rules to learn about what how a button should look and intuitively what people expect, their expectations from buttons. Um, and also then there's how Jira works. And sometimes we have there's a balancing act between making it fit into what would be the perfect design but if if someone was a jira user what would they expect from the workflow of a jira app? yeah <laughs> it's, it, it's really tough but it, it it's worth getting i mean the truth is yes yeah, so many features we could have released in the last uh, year but until we can publish it in an easy to use intuitive format uh, there's more work needed because I, I see the apps that just throw the kitchen sink of features, 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 features. And again, that's when you end up needing a two-week course to understand how it works. Right. Yeah, there's beauty in the elegance. Um, one of my favorite things, I think, 
when I usually when I show people is like that you can combine the statuses, right? Like a lot of people have like to do and review and a bunch of like in oh more than that, right? We've seen some yeah, yeah. horror shows where every that. department like, wants to call done a different thing. Right, right. And I'm like, <laughs> you can just group these all as like in work. <laughs> and they're like and then and then my favorite like jaw dropper is like when they want to change their colors, right? Because red, yellow, green for like executives is like you for know, a rag board, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the rag boards are like everybody's favorites. And so I'm like, watch this. And I just type in like the hex code for red, like the perfect red that they like. And they're like, how did you do that? So it's like the low key nerdiest part of of custom charts is like knowing your hex codes for red, yellow, and green. <laughs> well, as I said, it started off as just a color picker for pie charts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that was, that's always been my favorite feature that I can like put in whatever exact shade of red that I want to display on that thing is just. Well, I, I can nerd out on it, but I think data visualization is a really important one. And yeah, if you're working with people, you want to share your wins, your successes. It's great if you can just then share that dashboard with everyone everywhere and say, hey, da, 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 da. Um, it, it sucks when they get back to you and go, I don't understand this. What does purple mean? Why is that right. <laughs> segment yellow? Why is that segment green? Yeah. And but last month's report you sent me, the colors were opposite. Why is it opposite? Uh, why is it all red? Is that bad? You're like, oh, no, Jira just randomizes the colors out of the box. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> Dude, so I don't know that I've never told you. I definitely have never told you this story, but but I almost got fired once because of my in a, my my resistance to want to use metrics and graphs and reports. Like I just I hated them up until like oh, I, I get it. No, like we ago. had it. The first argument I had in the comments of the Atlassian community is when I was talking about you know reporting on what work's been done. And everyone was like, oh, this is just so they can fire people who haven't done their work. And this is for bad managers to micromanage. And I was like, G guys, guys, the, the pie chart is a humble tool. If your manager is weaponizing a pie chart against you, that sounds like a management problem, not a custom chart problem. <laughs> Are you tired of struggling to present your data in a clear and visually compelling way within Jira? Look no further. Introducing custom charts for Jira by our good friends over at Old Street Solutions. They provide the ultimate solution for powerful and customizable data visualization within Jira. Old Street Solution is the official sponsor for our Thursday at Lasting Community Member interviews. Use the link in the description down below to start a free trial of custom charts for Jira today. Yeah, no, that's always been my thing. Like, I, I had a job where my job was literally every 24 hours, update the latest metrics for the next day. Um, mm. so oh, we've I all hated, hated that, right? I, in yeah. sales, I remember, like, if, if it's not updated in the CRM, you're going to get in trouble and you haven't hit your target and you're not going to get paid commission and all that. So, so I appreciate it. But that's why I think, you know, it should just, should just be easy to use, right? Simple, yeah. not a drag, not a pain. Not having to export data to Excel, which a lot of people used to do. <laughs> oh my That's still my biggest battle today. I, I think people that, I don't know how you'll ever win the diehard Excel fans, but I, I cringe every time because everybody's like, they'll export it and they'll do, they'll do their pivot tables and magic sauce in, in Excel. I'm like, you know that we have a tool that does it for you live. <laughs> it just shows it to you live <laughs> without having to snapshot your information. But, I mean, this, this is the problem. You won't convince them. But the problem is, like, does everyone else want to look at that uh, Excel? It reminds me of a meme, like, that feeling when you've made a perfect Excel spreadsheet and no one wants to look at it. <laughs> That's <laughs> the problem. It's like, yeah, every time I get sent an Excel sheet as an attachment in an email, I'm like, all right, I, I guess I have to pay for another month of Microsoft Office to open know, this right? file yeah. then. <laughs> I think my favorite Excel memory was... Uh... I worked at this big defense contractor, so those big old plotter printers. I had I, somebody once printed out their Excel sheet in a plotter. That thing's like feet, like two meters big. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would put it up on the walls in the conference rooms, and like you have these giant Excel just printed out, like wall size. <laughs> I'm like, some people just love Excel. <laughs> I've been using Jira since 2016, so <laughs> I long converted. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I've heard all these people, oh, how, how do we convert this data across to Excel? I'm like, don't, <laughs> please don't, please stop it. Anyway, we'll move on. Yeah, so obviously then Trello was big in your life, right? Big influence. Um, where did you see this opportunity then to to focus on, on, on Jira and Atlassian tools versus, because again, you, you kind of like Trello before it was a thing, or before it was an Atlassian thing. And so I mean, what, what made you decide that Atlassians was where we're going to start investing and this is where we're going to build our company off of? It's where I got hired, right? The ecosystem was growing so fast. 
uh, so that they were willing to hire scuba diving instructors from Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> like, so this was it. Like it, it was just growing fast enough to provide opportunities to weirdos like me who think a bit differently. So uh, that that was why I first got into it. Um, and then yeah, where I saw the opportunity, I just think you know it's the early adopter stage right, of the crossing the chasm, the bell curve, the, the first movers who are, you know, riding around on segways wearing Google Glass, um, wearing their Apple headsets. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they'll appreciate the new tech with all its problems and issues, and they'll find a hack and work it out. But, but for everyone else like me, the, the late adopters, uh, I just saw that it really wasn't catering well to us at all. But more and more HR departments and marketing departments were being forced to use Jira. Um, and not enjoying it. So, so I, I just saw the opportunity there. I figured that, you know, while everyone else was competing to make a script runner copy that was even more powerful and even more complicated to use, I was like, just how do I change the color of the pie chart? <laughs> like, I want to just do something simple without having to go on a two-week training course. So I think a lot of people, I'd, I'd really recommend that they just keep that in mind that so many of us are Atlassian experts and love this ecosystem and you know, go on courses all the time and know everything. And just remember that a lot of the users you're talking to would rather be doing it in Excel, given the choice. <laughs> They'd rather not be playing the cheer out. They don't want to learn a new thing. They don't care. Um, and, and, you know, be patient and sympathetic for that because change is hard for people, especially, you know, people who are non-technical and Jira isn't key to their day-to-day. -day. If you work in marketing... Jira is that report that you have to show, show to the boss to prove you've actually done the job, right? Right. Um, which, which is resented. And, and so it's about making it as frictionless and easy as possible. Again, beautiful, beautiful insight there. Um, and your tagline on LinkedIn just makes infinite more sense to me, by the way. <laughs> I've been staring at that tagline for, well, I really liked it a year ago. Now it's just like, now I can see the reason why you have that tagline. Is what is my tagline on LinkedIn? I have to remind. I make my I make Jira intuitive for people. <laughs> yes, like that. <laughs> <laughs> so for people. For there people. are people designing for for bots. I think at this point, yeah. and I I just think there's a lot of value, right? Like I think so. I'm a software developer by my background, right? And so there is there's a lot of excitement in like building cool stuff and like building things that are like nerdy and geeky and stuff, but. Yeah, like now that I look back, right, I'm reflecting at like all the users and all the comments that I get across my channel. Like the overwhelming majority is folks on like they're like, I just have to do this for my job, and I don't know how to do this. <laughs> like, I'm not do passionate about it. I don't. I don't want to learn how to do all of it. I just <laughs> want to get it done and move on with my life. Right. So yeah, definitely some good lessons there for anybody who's who's hoping to build not even anything Jira related, right, but just anything technical related. Um, Put that user first and they'll reward you handsomely, apparently. Uh, what's your biggest lesson since you started this out? Then, um, obviously, you've been in this game for a while. What's a good lesson or, or something that got you or, or something that, that you really, really gained some insight from? Yeah, I'd, I'd build on you know what I've said. I think that technical people are very often geniuses and kind of miss, miss, that, miss that key point that uh, most people... It's not, it's not that they're not smart. Like I say, every job has, is very technical, right, uh, at, at some level. But they just they don't have the passion and enthusiasm that you know, the average Atlassian consultant or Jira admin has. I mean, Jira admins are a weird bunch for someone to volunteer to take care of that. <laughs> Sorry to insult you and all your audience at this point, but, you know, God bless you, geeks. The world needs you. I know, um, right? But, but just appreciate that, yeah, like, n no one shares your enthusiasm or passion. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, we just don't. So, I like to that's why I bleed blue, but apparently nobody else is bleeding blue. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's just really important uh, to remember. You know, same with the XL geeks. Sorry, but no one else cares. <laughs> Um, and, and it's, yeah, just understanding the end user. Um, it, it's not necessarily that they're dumb. Uh, very rarely are they. It's just that they don't care and they don't have time and they're not looking to make it their full-time career. So, yeah, I uh, want to appreciate that. Um, they don't want to learn a shortcut. Uh, they don't want to learn JQL. They don't want to learn Groovy to use Script Runner and say, oh, you don't need to buy an add-on. You can just hack it yourself using Script Runner. Right. They don't want that. They just want to click a button and the thing's done and then they can and move yeah. on with their day and their day job. So I think I think it's really important to appreciate that. And that can be applied with everything. You know, I'm 
passionate about search engine optimization and getting on the front, front page of Google, I will bore someone to death if I corner them at a party <laughs> talking <laughs> about it. Um, we, we all have those things. And so, yeah, d don't assume just because someone doesn't understand it, it means you know they're dumb. Uh, just they probably don't have your passion for it. Right. <laughs> but, you know, fi find their passion uh, and, and give them the tools they need to get on with that and they'll fly. So I got to ask you a little off script question. Has anybody ever compared you to like the Steve Jobs of Atlassian? <laughs> this is too much, Alex. I'm not. I am, not the I am Steve getting Jobs nothing but like, well, because this whole time that you're explaining this whole thing, like I'm just thinking like a thousand songs in your pocket. Like everybody else with MP3 players was like this and that, gigabytes and screen yeah, sizes and hard drive yeah. sizes. And Mi just, Microsoft like, had a better product, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, and you're yeah, just yeah. like, here's a thousand songs in your pocket. Go do what you got to do in Jira. Well, I'm, just, I'm a marketing guy. So uh, that's the comparison, right? Like, so I, I me, honestly if think you can't say it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Right? Yeah, a, a master's class in, in, in Chris's marketing uh, is in, in order, I think. <laughs> I, I do them. So for those that don't know, I do. A, I'm on the vendors council. So we talk to Atlassian, and I recommend how they can improve things from a marketing perspective for the other vendors. Mm. And then I hold roughly every two months uh, a round table where we all, all the vendors, all the marketing departments of the vendors, uh, just share ideas and tips and tricks and ask questions. Um, and very often, those people are my competitors. But this, it's a growing market, so so I don't feel we need to hide. And also, by the way, you know if if my business advantage is being able to keep a secret that I read in a book, well, that's not going to, I'm not going to have that competitive advantage for very long. You right. Know, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. so like, look that, at that. I'm very happy to share. For free, all that knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> well, why not? Like it's not hard. And it's funny because people often think misunderstand the silver bullet with marketing. Sorry. I know this isn't a marketing. No, no, it's, it's fine. Podcast, it's totally cool. but, <laughs> but people are often looking for the silver bullet and I'm just like, it's just doing the fundamentals. Well, Often, and I tell people like, yeah, write write good content. So it's, yeah, that people yeah. that your end users want to watch or read, um, and the rest kind of takes care of itself. And everyone assumes, no, no, but what's the secret secret sauce? I'm like, right. that's, no, that's it. That's the good content. That's, that's literally, yeah, that's like like with YouTube, right? Like, there's always like, how do we break into that YouTube space? How do we become that viral influencer thing? And there's like, and everybody will tell you this exact same tips. It's like, create videos that people want to watch <laughs> it's like literally the key <laughs> but it's so simple yet almost extremely hard to do <laughs> i mean you'll find your niche maybe your niche is small right you might you might it might not get you to 10 million views right like yeah i, I like that. to think i'm monopolizing the jira space here <laughs> yeah well you know there's there's what i got i got one more and a half of you <laughs> <laughs> i got one more competitor i'm going after um lamec from from moxie the portuguese jura channel I don't know if you've heard oh, of him. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, he's got like 27,000 subscribers. And I think that's the... I, I don't know that there's any other like Atlassian, like dedicated Atlassian influencer that that is like... That I haven't like... I've surpassed already. I mean, you know, he's in Brazil though, right? So you yeah, get big in there, Brazil. Yeah. All I, 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 bet, I bet there's an Indian YouTuber that's thrashing you, but... I know, right? No, I got to find them. Can't compete I mean, with Indian numbers. There's, there's other... I mean, there's like a lot of other YouTubers, but they're not. They, they'll do like test automation. They'll do you know a bunch of other stuff, and I'm like, I'm not. And that's the only broader, one. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much and broader, this the, right? Or, this is the problem, like, I think. I mean, again, yeah. we're going off topic, but very no. often marketing influencers give advice on, and if it's easy for them because they're giving general advice on marketing, which is a very broad topic. And if I apply, you know, their, their advice to my small channel, which focused on people who are interested in Jira. And reporting that's a small Venn diagram <laughs> yeah so, so yeah you, you just have to think outside the box I think yeah but just I don't know like I feel like I don't have the creative genius to think outside the box like I'm just so black and white I think in in the but, way of but Alex you're yourself and the things you're interested in you will speak best on and so you will find that audience and let's be honest most Jira admins aren't Steve Jobs <laughs> so <laughs> they will like what you talk about, and they'll be passionate about the same things you talk about. You got to speak to your own people, speak to your own tribe. And, and the worst is when people pretend to be something else or something they're not. Like that, it won't work. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I try, I've tried to stay true. Um, it, it's, 
I just think it's a, a little dry, right? So I try to make a list a little interesting because this Jira stuff, man. <laughs> it's only so many ways you can talk, tell people how to write a story. <laughs> I'm frequently impressed by your attempts to make it oh. sound interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you are cool. Um, this one, feel free to shamelessly plug here, but what's your favorite plug in the Atlassian marketplace? Like, what's one plugin you can't live without? <laughs> I've talked about it myself enough. I'll talk about, I won't say I can't live without, but I would say sum up for Jira. Um, the only reason I started a company is because we saw sum up for Jira and we saw how simple it was as an add on. <laughs> they've, they've done work on it in the last couple of years, but honestly, sum up for Jira was what convinced us to start our own vendor because I was like, how many installs do they have? How many dollars? And it does what? And when I saw that, that inspired me to be like, well, well, if that if that is a profitable business in the Atlassian marketplace, then I will make my own. <laughs> it's so funny because I actually used to, prior to me meeting Custom Charts or you for, uh, for uh, just the Custom Charts for Jira part, I used to use Sum Up for Jira because I needed to sum up fields. And, um, but once once I learned that you can sum up numerical fields and custom charts as well i would i told everybody like it's so much cheaper and more effective to just get the custom charts part because you can do the sum up part plus everything else alex i feel bad i tried to give him a shout out and i know <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but i just thought it was funny, funny. I, I thought it was funny when you said that because i was like huh that's like the opposite of what i do <laughs> <laughs> but yeah being able to sum up your values inside of jura is a very very important thing but <laughs> Cool. Um, if you can change one thing about Atlassian or Jira or any of the Atlassian tools, like what would it be? We all know that Jira's dashboards are a little lackluster. Wouldn't it be cool if you could significantly make your metrics and reports better? With custom charts for Jira, you can transform your raw data into stunning charts and graphs that make an impact. No more settling for the default Jira reports or spending hours manually manipulating data in a spreadsheet. Go show our friends at Old Street Solutions the power of the internet and show them your support and start a free trial to custom charts for Jira today. Um, I think too often Atlassian forgets that the Atlassian marketplace exists. Uh, it's very strange to me that you go to an ITSM event uh, and the vendor, the app vendor that's just made, won an award for the best ITSM add-on in the Atlassian ecosystem not only isn't invited to that ITSM event, but isn't allowed to attend because they say, oh, partners can come, but vendors can't. Um, I just think we have such a rich marketplace, um, such a rich ecosystem of add-ons. And it, for some reason, there's still a part of Atlassian that wants to deny the existence of add-ons and thinks that Atlassian can do it all. And it's just nonsense and it's not true. It's interesting that you bring that up to them because one of my observations, I've never been to a team conference. And one of my observations was like, hey, Atlassian just announced a lot of cool stuff. But I also see a lot of vendors that do that cool stuff. So like what happens to them? Because Apple has the same problem in their marketplace too, right? Like they'll they'll create the next weather app and then all of a sudden an app is just obsolete. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's the fear. It's the reason why a lot of people are scared because you are a tick riding on the back of a dinosaur <laughs> hoping it won't roll over and crush you, right? So what um, happens next? Like, does that have... app never talk to you or did they just announce like features? Like So over the years, a couple of apps have just been crushed. Atlassian just went, sorry, it doesn't make sense for this to be an external thing and we think we could do what you've made better. Um, if you're big enough, they do actually give you uh, a year's notice normally, <laughs> a year's heads up. Um, I mean, they, they've already come for custom charts for Jira uh, with, with the acquisition of Chartio, Chartio. I think two years ago, right? Chart.io. Uh, two years ago, they gave us a heads up, our, te our technical partner manager, and told us like, okay, we're acquiring this and we think it'll be a problem for you. And yeah, we had some serious meetings and we're like, oh, should we stop investing? Is it is it game over? Um, but we looked at it and, you know, we kind of figured that they were more coming for the likes of Easy BI, um, that, that it was more of a outside of Atlassian data lake, data center, big reporting thing, whereas we're yeah. small data color pie chart picker, right? Um, so, so we weren't overly concerned, um, but we thanked Atlassian for the heads up and the warning, at least. Um, I mean, do you know Boris? No. Maybe. Oh, you have to interview Boris. Boris is great. 
<laughs> I won't say a surname because, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and those who know know who Boris is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Boris told me, like, never be scared if Atlassian uh, copy your app or, or make it native because an app vendor will do it better than Atlassian will. And so Atlassian will spend a lot of money hyping an idea. The customers will all hear about it rush to it, be disappointed, and then find your add-on. So he, he told me that it actually boosts your sales when Elastian tries to copy that makes, you. And, and that just makes so much sense, right? Because, again, you, you trigger a little soft spot for me with, with Chartio because uh, I used it, right? Like, I got invited to the beta program, as they now called it, like, at, analytics or whatever, Elastian yeah. is branding it. And, and I swear, I had an engineer walking me through it, like, their engineer. And I'm like... Yeah. I'm like, guys, I use this tool 14 hours a day and I can't figure this out. <laughs> like, this yeah. is too hard. And so that's the answer. It's like, oh, you just have to hire someone that has a master's in using this new software that no one's familiar with. Like, yeah, so I'm like, yeah. Difficult. And then we go back to how we started this thing. I, I give custom trust for Jira to everybody and they just run and they can use it and they can do it and they can they can articulate their thoughts and ideas and visions of their, their metrics to everybody and with with this analytics thing, I was like, I can't even like get one thing to pop up on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> and if you can't, there's no hope for the marketing team. Yeah. <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> like you're a smart guy, Alex. Like, yeah, like, clearly there was like just no hope for anybody else. <laughs> and I tried. Yeah. Like I like I'm just very honest. Like I honestly try. Like I'm like, how do I work this thing? Like I know what I wanted, I know what data I wanted, but I couldn't figure out how to get it out of there. But this is it. Everyone deserves right data feedback on their work right i think everyone deserves that like uh, otherwise you know i've seen so many debates in the meeting and i'm like so guys is it just your opinion versus your opinion and who shouts loudest like have we got any data to help us make this decision uh and yeah everyone from the marketing team to the sales team if they have data at their fingerprint fingertips that's a very very powerful thing um and so yeah unfortunately like every time i hear of this big data dream that, that, that gets sold i'm like it's a lie, though, because big data comes from 10,000 people having small data at their fingertips, right? And yeah. if no one's putting data into that big data system, then the results, the report you get at the end of the year is just based on nonsense. <laughs> so, so I got to ask you then, and, and feel free to not disclose this if, if it's something that's confidential, but the only way that analytics from Atlassian made sense to me after, again, beta testing it for a few months was... When they're like, oh, you're just going to be able to use AI to ask it for what, where are my blockers at? So on custom charts for Jira, any, any hopes that we'll get a natural language, I want this, I want to see this in Jira, or I want to see that in Jira, and just have the custom charts be made? Yeah, so... Um, Again, if you, if you don't want of, to... No, no, it's fine. Um, the joy of partnering with Tempo um, is that, yeah, they have a bigger team working on, on machine learning and AI. Um, and so, yeah, it's not something that we had the space or expertise to do. But now we've aligned with the mothership uh, and we've got some really smart people working on that. Yeah, look, watch this space. We've got some exciting updates running. I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah, because that, that I feel like the moment that you can naturally just tell people or tell the tool what you want and have it spit it out for you just would be like a game changer because then it really enables everybody anywhere, any discipline of any skill set to do whatever they want. So. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, what's something unique or special in how you use one of these Atlassian tools? Like any any special Chris way? Uh, yeah. So this will shock everyone except for my team. Uh, I don't use Jira. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. I don't it's, yeah. It. I'm not a fan. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> It pays oh. my bills, but, but, but look, I'm a CEO, right? And and so again, you need to understand your end user. Um, no one cares ab about your Jira dashboard uh, if, if if they don't use Jira day to day. The average CEO probably doesn't have a Jira login, or if they do, they've not used it. Um, I, I log into Confluence all the time, and so if my team put a summary, a, a, a report in Confluence, I will see it and I will digest it and I'll read the text around it and, and understand it. Um, and so I think people need to know that, like, really, if you want to get approval from a board or share your successes or, you know, you know uh, highlight a problem, uh, don't assume everyone's into Jira as much as you. Like, if, if, if Confluence is, is where it's put, uh, be, be prepared to, to put it there because I think that's 
what often gets missed out by Jira enthusiasts is that sending a link to a Jira dashboard won't get opened by the most important people. They won't know how to look into Jira, let alone understand how to navigate around the Jira dashboard. So, so that's interesting that you say that to them because now I'll, I'll throw in, in the words of my uh, of Andy, I'll throw some shade. Hey. <laughs> I love I'll throw some shade. I'll throw some shade because I, I think everybody thinks that I love custom charts for Jira way too much. <laughs> I, I, by the way, like just for anyone in doubt, I'm not paying Alex to say all these nice things. Yeah, no, no, Chris never. Yeah, I, I almost have to start almost every sentence with not sponsored, but. <laughs> Let me tell you about this cool tool. <laughs> um, no, but but in all seriousness, right? Like it's so interesting that you said that because in my mind, the two things that just connected right now was Chris doesn't use Jira, which is uh, totally fine, right? I believe it or not, we we J- the Jira guy and I we started the Jira Life, our new podcast, right? Yeah, great and, podcast by the way, check it out. Right, <laughs> and and so shamelessly we were using Excel to uh, track. <laughs> Our, our episodes and confess your sins right yeah yeah now. no but here's here's the worst part so my wife doesn't use jira she's just my editor right like she, she's my developer editor she does everything outside of jira sure. she wouldn't be able to add you a feel to a cut to a screen at all right yeah. and she's she like want to hey. learn it right she no no she doesn't care it. for it right yeah she doesn't care for it. she just needs to know what to do and when and when when we have when she has to do her part of the job by right and so she she calls Rodney and I out. She's like, "Why aren't you guys using Jira to track all this?" Because I'm getting confused as to what episode we're on and what what goes with what. And I'm like, I was like, I can't believe we're being asked the Jira guy and Doctor Jira to be by a non Jira person to use Jira. <laughs> but the point I was trying to go with it, right? The, so, so such a different rabbit hole that was. But the the question that I had or my observation was, okay, so you're not using Jira, which again, totally fine, but you're an executive. Right, and so you have a you have a different appreciation and different value for the the facts and data that your team works on. Yep. But one of my biggest struggles, or I guess complaints or criticisms of custom trust for Jira, is like I don't feel like I can articulate to an executive what they want to see using custom trust for Jira. Yeah, it's a good point. So I mean, to that, I'll I'll start with you know reiterating, if you can't share it with people outside of Jira. If a tree falls in the forest and no one hears, it doesn't make a noise, right? And so right. if you've made a dashboard that's summarizing all your team's work, but it's not easy to share externally with people outside of Jira, or by the way, not, not just people outside of Jira, but maybe people on a different instance, which often happens at companies, right? Yeah. Different departments on different instances. So I think it's crucial whatever tools you use, the ability to share it with people outside of your instance. Otherwise, it's the best kept secret. And that's really disheartening if you've got your team working on some great things and they can't share those wins, they can't highlight the problems, they can't share the successes. Um, another thing, though, and, and I think it's a fair pushback of custom charts for Jira, it doesn't do a lot of the, the big data uh, that the C-suite want, right? And that is precisely why we teamed up with Tempo, because we were getting bigger and bigger customers and they had bigger and bigger, oh, we want multi-project reports, right? We want to run a dashboard with 100,000 uh, issues. Can you do that? And a year ago, the answer was no. Um, and now what we're working on with the smart people over at Tempo uh, is the ability to do that so that we can be a proper yeah. project program management reporting suite so that you can pull those big multi-project reports or you can drill down on data like the Tempo data, right? actual time tracking, actual spend tracking, uh, if you look at the structured data as well, right? So we're, we're working on all those integrations so that we can finally be that because at the moment what we always used to say is you need custom charts and you need a bi solution you need both right we're, we're for the day-to-day the weekly work and for the quarterly c-suite town hall meeting sorry we can't help you but but now we've teamed up with tempo uh big things coming soon I'm and excited about, that, yeah, yeah my biggest we're excited to announce been... time and status should Almost? be l- launched by the time this video is released okay <laughs> Awesome. I'm I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, I, so many people ask for time and status, right? Like it's just a really, really big ask. Um, I, I, get, I get privy to being asked so many different questions from all different avenues. And it's just like, everybody well, wants look, to know those things. As this is such a transparent chat, right? Like I, I thought we'd release time and status in time for Vegas last year. Um, what you often find with these big data, pro- big data problems is you start pulling on one end of the problem and you realize how big it is. And, you know, the difference between reporting on what is live data in Jira snapshot now the second is much bigger when you're like having to keep all the historical data over time. 
right? It's just it, it's an exponentially larger problem. Yeah, and so it's and, why, and it's why it's taking that... us so long to to crack. I mean, we've been able to do it for six months, but you don't want to know how slow the reports used to load. So right, no one wants to see that. <laughs> yeah, no, because there's there's value in that, right? That's probably again another thing that I that just at last year as a whole, right? There is no trend data. There is no people want to see quarter to quarter, month to month, week to week. How are their teams improving or getting worse? And I'm like, the burn down chart is the only thing that gives you anything trendy. <laughs> and yeah, that's so like, the, improving and getting worse isn't only what status was the time in, but comparing the delta on statuses over time. So that's then another dimension of data you have to track. Right, <laughs> right yeah. Like, so, it's yeah, an infinitely yeah, you're looking at, uh, <laughs> You're monitoring acceleration over time, so you need to know what it was then, what it was now. And it, but I get why it's important. You need to know if stuff was stuck in uh, testing for too long and if that's where your biggest block is you, maybe you need to hire another tester or change your process there that's your bottleneck right so it's very important to know where stuff getting stuck and if you know one stuff is always stuck with one particular developer is that because he's useless or is it because he gets given all the most tricky tasks because he's the best person right like you need the data to inform that conversation right? i think you might you might have to update your branding for for custom charts for just be custom charts for your your bottleneck finder <laughs> or something like that. That's really all the executives care about. I was like, where the heck are we getting stuck? <laughs> like, why can't we move forward? <laughs> yeah, and that's the problem with the people who think uh, that yeah, we're just looking. Reports are used to find someone to fire someone. It's like, no, no, no. Like, really? That I mean, a bad manager maybe, but right, really, yeah. at its best, we're, we're hunting for the bottlenecks. Where where where's the process improvement we can make rather than the person improvement? Yeah, no, I used to run a daily meeting where we would run like literally every single day for an hour to two hours, depending on just how bad the last 24 hours were. And and we'd go item by item, not not to finger point, not to like fire people, but like really like where did we lose traction and like where how do we get the traction so that we can then enable the team to then move at least an inch forward again. And then we'll check back in 24 hours to see if we did good or bad. Yeah, I, Dan Hardiker from Adapt to This taught me about, you know, blame free retrospectives and autopsy. So really going through and encouraging psychological safety and making sure people are comfortable and making clear this isn't about finding fault or blame. This, this is about service management and finding where we can fix the problems that keep arising. Well, I'm looking forward to it then, right? Because again, my biggest thing that I would love to see that I don't think I've seen anybody do, but it, well, because I've looked at almost every dashboard and metrics and reporting tool out there in Atlassian is, Every, every single manager that I've ever spoken to is like, I need to know my percent complete on this project. <laughs> How far along are we on this delivery? Like, are we close? Are we bad? Are we really bad? Well, look out for custom charts by Tempo. Uh, we're working on some really exciting things. Nice. Excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Uh, what excites you the most about the future of Atlassian? Um... <laughs> That they're about to be acquired by Microsoft? <laughs> no. You don't think? Uh, no, no. You don't think Mike and Scott are getting tired, re ready to uh, sell up? No. Nah, they look tired. I, Every time I've seen them, they look exhausted. They do look exhausted. I don't even know what those two do. <laughs> I, I, You should have seen me, man. You should have seen me at team, like, hunting them down. I, I yeah, think just I to get the selfie. <laughs> I was trying to go, so, uh, Mike, I saw Mike. And and I'm like, uh, do you know uh, Andy Gladstone? Yeah, 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 of yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. So I'm sitting next to him. Where I, my hotel was kind of far, so I'm like, I'm just gonna wait between when the conference is over and bash. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I told Andy, I'm like, look, there goes Mike. And so I get up and I try to like follow him to see where they go, and they disappeared somewhere. I couldn't find him anymore. And then and then I go and sit down back with Andy, like I'm all disappointed. And he's like, you look, you know, he you look troubled. And I'm like. You know, it's like I don't ever get to talk to a CEO, and I th I thought it'd be pretty cool to like take a picture or a selfie with the CEO. And Andy's a CTO, I believe, or something. like he's a C-suite executive, and he's like, I talk to the CEO every day. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, well, for us people, little right? people. <laughs> and then, yeah, and I, then, he, and then I realized, like, wait, I talk to Chris all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a bit more accessible as a CEO. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a slightly smaller company. Yeah. I am. Um, I'll give you a gift, mate. Like I will happily Photoshop a, a picture of you with Mike and Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Just, but I didn't know. So then, for Anu, I, I basically I saw her outside of the 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 hotel, outside of the 
Velocity or where, where the heck we're Venetian, wherever we were at, right? And I'm FaceTiming with my wife, and I'm like, I think I just saw the president of Atlassian walking by. She's like, take a picture. And so three times I tried to take a picture with her, and I couldn't do it. Then I saw her in the hallway, and I couldn't do it. And I'm like, screw it. When I saw her at Bash, I went right up to her. This was after Andy had my Be the Boss of Ballsville conversation. Yes. <laughs> That's how you do it, bro. You just ask. <laughs> and so I got the picture. And I'm like, I was. it was probably my proudest moment of the entire conference because I'm like, I overcame like the biggest fear and challenge ever, <laughs> which is go up to the president of a company and take a picture with her. <laughs> yes, man. Right. So I don't, know if you, I, don't, I don't think you watch these videos, but if you ever do, <laughs> thank you for helping me fulfill that part of my journey. <laughs> Um, all right, so but yeah, no, I don't know that Microsoft, uh, maybe somebody else, but uh, not Microsoft because they have a Azure DevOps, right? They have ADO, like it doesn't make sense for me. It makes sense, I think. I like the only question is whether they'd get sued to oblivion by the antitrust commission. Well, because at that point, yeah, because at that point, you have the, the true monopoly because Rally and like Monday and Asana, all those things are pure garbage and they don't do what Jira does. And because I tell people the only true competitor. At an affordable, the only true affordable competitor to Jira is Azure DevOps. Because everything else is, you need to have a marketing sales team conversation with the company, like version one. Otherwise, you're not getting your hands on, on version one, right? So I don't know. Like, it doesn't, I guess now it kind of makes sense, right? Because if you can't beat them, join them. Because <laughs> Azure DevOps is, is well, I actually do prefer a, 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 um, Azure DevOps a little bit more over Jira. But and they bought, was it GitHub or GitLab? They, they, GitHub. They bought yeah. GitHub. Yeah. I mean, maybe. We'll see. We'll, we'll have to get a wager going. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my hot tip. Right. I mean, I, so I secret, yeah, so we're basically, we're out of time here. So let's just wrap this up here. Chris, so what secret do you have for folks that are wanting to get into this Atlassian space, right? Obviously, you are an enabler of people. And I think you do understand people quite well. So if somebody that's new, right, somebody that's just kind of like, they have to do this for their job. It just they're picking this up for the first time, but they're lost. Right? Like, what advice tips would you have for, for these folks? Uh, honestly, if you're watching this video, you're in the right place. Like, there, <laughs> there's some really great content um, by, by people who just explain it clearly uh, and with passion. Um, and I would recommend that. Like, really, uh, yeah. I, I don't be intimidated. Don't have imposter syndrome. Uh, <laughs> six years ago, I was on a beach in Thailand playing with turtles. Uh, so, yeah, really, um, but there's room for many different diverse people in this in, in this ecosystem. Uh, don't be intimidated; you can learn it. This is a very new tech. Like, there's not, you know, there's no no one's worked for Jira for twenty years, right? Mate? So, so <laughs> yeah. you can catch up, especially now. There's much better guides than there used to be. You guys had to read all the documentation written ten years ago. I, I tell people I still have like the six hundred page book right there in my closet to read. Yeah. I, I should just put uh, it Alex has read it, so you don't have to. Just watch his summaries, <laughs> <laughs> ask him questions in the comments, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, get, I'll get them out there for you. So before I ask my last question, um, I got to ask you now because you said something again, very very interesting here. Um, Turtles on the beach. Now that you've done this acquisition, right? Like, what's next for Chris? Not not the company, uh, but for Chris himself. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I've never worked for a company as big as Tempo, so I know it's not that big by many people's standards. But for me, I'm really enjoying this level of learning, um, and so I'm sort of running to Tempo and seeing, yeah, how I can help out the bigger company as a whole because I think it's really important that we connect these dots. Um, and so, so I'll, I'll give it my best go there and, and see how long they like. But no, me. no plans to move to Boston. <laughs> I mean, I love Boston. Boston's an amazing city. So definitely, we'll be visiting there soon. Uh, and I might be in Florida in a couple of weeks as well for the Agile Alliance. Oh yeah, I saw that that you guys were officially sponsoring it. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, so yeah, for now, just uh, focusing on yeah, like integrating the apps and learning what I can from the wonderful smart people at so, Tempo. So Next step, is... I, I'd love to find something outside the Latin ecosystem but I think they'll keep pulling me back in I just have too many connections here and, and too, too many things I want to achieve so this is this is why I asked you this question right I don't know if you've heard of this story about this fisherman in Mexico yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the guy on holiday right yeah the guy on holiday who came from like New York or whatever and he finds this fisherman and he's like Hey, well, how, talk to me about your business strategy here. And the guy's like, I just fish enough for my family, and then I sell a little leftovers or whatever. And then, yeah. then he's like, Well, let me build you into a whole business and a whole empire. Only, uh, so yeah. That, why? 
And the answer yeah, is, well, then you can afford you can to come up... on holiday to Mexico. Right. <laughs> so when you said the fishes in, in a Taiwanese beach, right? Like, is there, now that you, I, I feel like you're, you probably hit pinnacle, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, maybe. Alex. No, I wouldn't bet against you. No. <laughs> I'm just but, getting started. <laughs> you're just getting started. So, so laying on a beach with the turtles is still not, not here's, where we're at Here's yet. my problem. When I was on the beach in, in Thailand, I started a dive company. And when that wasn't enough, I started an eco-tourism <laughs> company. And when that wasn't enough, I started a social media marketing agency. And when that wasn't enough, I started an events company. And when that wasn't enough, I came back to England and started in software. So, yeah, I, I don't lie on the beach. It's, yeah. it's not, I don't have that gear in me, unfortunately. Because I, so, I live... Um, have you ever read The 4-Hour Workweek? Uh, no, but I'm it's a Tim Ferriss thing where you're supposed to work like four hours and travel the world in the other time. Of the, um, there's a train. I live in San Diego and my parents live in Orange County. And there's a train that will connect the two cities together and it rides right up against the, the tracks there. And I remember one time I was just uh, looking at everybody just doing yoga on the beach. And I'm like, why do I work so hard? <laughs> why do I do because 14, you love it? And that's 14 great. Hour days. <laughs> Well, find something you love and you'll never work a day in your life, right? Like, I can't yeah, promise that I've never did. worked. But, but yeah, you have to find your passion and find something you're good at. And apparently, I'm a big fan of working with nerds and do, doing weird marketing stuff that they're not thinking of. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, last question is where can people find you? Where where do we find uh, you? On, on LinkedIn is probably the best. Uh, you don't want to see my stand-up comedy. It's very <laughs> offensive. But uh, on I'm LinkedIn, actually very excited for you. Big Chris Cook. <laughs> I like those. Those are fun. <laughs> I enjoy watching Thank them on paper so from time to time. <laughs> well, thanks. Oh my god, you've seen my comedy. Oh, Alex, I've, I've had to. Like, I'm, a, I'm a. I have like a like a Chris shirt underneath this button down here. <laughs> 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 no, I'm a, 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 no, sure. I'm, a, I'm a very huge fan. I think Chris, like, I do look up to you quite a bit, right? And I don't know. I don't know how drunk you were at teams, but <laughs> the conversations we were having <laughs> at, at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> so I get this a lot. Uh, people say, uh, oh, we had a chat, but you were so nice, but you were drunk. I'm like, no, no. Here's the thing. No, you were, you were all there. <laughs> just because just because I said it went drunk doesn't mean I didn't mean it fully, wholly, from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> yeah, well, Alex, I, I have a lot of respect for you, man, and I'm sure you'll do very well and continue to share your insights with the Atlassian world, which is why you're becoming so successful because you're not trying to hide your secrets to, to have a competitive edge as a consultant. You're sharing it with the world. And that's yeah. that, that's how it should be, man. Right? Knowledge is to be shared and appreciated. Yeah, well, I'm going to take your marketing lessons today and I'm going to see how I can revamp this thing because I'm going to try to be uh, take inspiration from the Steve Jobs of Atlassian. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call myself that. You did. <laughs> <laughs> all right chris thank you very much i appreciate you Thanks coming on uh, thank you for getting to know you and um hopefully we can do this again sometime cheers man Take care. and that was the interview with chris i hope you enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed talking to him uh, if you want to support the channel do please make sure you smash that subscribe button this video is part of the summer of atlassian 2.0 so you're going to want to smash that subscribe button down below and if you got value out of the video right if you enjoyed the interview and you, if you enjoyed the banter the talking the questions and the answers do make sure you drop a like and let me know your favorite most memorable moment in the comment section down below Take control of your data. Custom Charts for Jira offers an extensive range of chart types and customization options, whether it's a bar chart, pie chart, or line chart, or pretty much a bunch of other different types of charts that they have. Create stunning visuals that represent your data in Jira accurately, tailored specifically to your specific needs. Head on over to the Atlassian Marketplace and show Old Street Solutions the power of the internet and start a free trial of Custom Charts for Jira today. Thanks, and I hope to see you next week with another interview. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need